Hi everyone, Claudia here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Today I wanna to show you features that iPhone has that most people do not know about. There is definitely at least one thing on this list for everyone to learn, so let's get started. I will leave timestamps in the description box if you're looking for something specific, and I'll also leave some other iPhone videos that I have created if you're interested in the description box as well. First things first, you want to make sure that your iPhone is up to date with all of its software since Apple is continuously releasing new features and its new updates. As you can see here, these are all the updates available for iOS 15. If you don't know how to do that, go to your settings, general, software update, and you will be given the option to do a software update or it will say that your phone is up to date. The first feature I want to talk about is the ability to add a second appearance to unlock your phone if you have the Face ID feature. The Face ID is available on the iPhone 10 and later, so if you want to add a second person who is able to unlock your phone with their face, you can do that by going into Settings, Face ID and Passcode, and clicking Set up Alternate Appearance. Feature number two is undoing a typo. For the longest time, I thought if I erased something on my phone, it was gone forever until I learned how to undo. If you go to your settings, accessibility, touch, you can activate shake to undo. So now if you type something like I have here, these room dimensions that I need, if I accidentally erase them, if I shake my phone, and you do have to have to give it a good shake so it can tell the difference between you just moving your phone, the undo option will come up. If you don't want to be shaking your phone, you can also just swipe with three fingers to the left to undo and the right to redo. While we're in the accessibility section, another great feature is reachability, especially if you have one of the larger phones. I, for example, cannot reach the top of my screen even if I wanted to. So within the accessibility section, if you select reachability, you can actually swipe down at the bottom of your screen and the top will come down a little bit so you can reach the apps or areas of your phone that are normally too high or far to reach. You do have to swipe in the very bottom section though. If you swipe too high up, it will just pull down your search bar. So just keep that in mind. One more of my favorite accessibility features that can come in handy for anyone is the magnification tool. You can add the magnification tool to your control panel, which is this little drop down here, by going to your settings, control center, and adding magnifier. Now, when you open your control center, you can click on the magnifying glass and zoom in on anything you wanna read. You can use the flashlight, you can change from the front camera to the back camera or vice versa. And when you're done using this, you can just swipe up to close it out and return to your home screen. Feature number five is hiding photos from your phone library. And I know this sounds like it could just be used for sketchy behavior. However, if you're, for example, planning a surprise party for someone that you live with who could stumble upon your phone or your photos, or with the holidays coming up, maybe you have an order confirmation that you wanna keep, but are worried that your secret's gonna get out, you can hide it and I will show you where they go in a minute. So if you click on a photo you wanna hide, click on this arrow at the bottom, and hide is one of the options. And when you click on it, this photo will be hidden from your camera roll. Then if you click on albums, all the way at the bottom, there is a hidden section where you'll be able to find anything that you've hidden. On the flip side, if you accidentally hide something, you can go to this album, find the photo, and unhide it. Feature number six is also in the camera roll, and that is adding captions to your photos. So say, for example, you take a picture of a recipe like I did here. Maybe you made some changes to the recipe or some adjustments that you want to make a note about. If you swipe up on the picture, you will see the option to add captions. And when you're done, just click done in the upper right corner, and it will save your captions. So if you come back to them later and swipe up, you'll see them here. Feature number seven is how to close out all of your tabs at once on Safari, or if you search on Google Chrome, it works the same way. I'm about to expose myself, but if this is something that you didn't know, please give this video a thumbs up because it will be worth it for me for the shame I'm about to experience. So once you open your Safari, you can click on the bottom right two squares and pull up your recent tabs. 
but if you click and hold that icon, as you can see, you can close all of your tabs at once. And yes, I had 235 tabs open, but they are gone now, thanks to this feature. Feature number eight is honestly not just a feature a lot of people don't know about, but it actually is hidden most of the time, and that is the scroll bar. So say you're reading an article or something where you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom, you can obviously just keep swiping until you get there, but as you're swiping, you may notice this little bar on the right side pops up. If you click and hold that down, you can actually scroll all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top of the page really quickly without just having to continuously swipe. Feature number nine has to do with the keyboard. There are actually additional letters and symbols if you click and hold down certain keys on your keyboard. Most of us know that if you hold your phone down on the cursor while you're texting, you can move the cursor around. But what a lot of people don't know is if you hold down the space bar button, you can actually do the same thing and I actually find it to be a little bit easier to navigate this way. And feature number 10 is one of the newest features that was released with iOS 15 and that is visual lookup. This is one that I've always wanted because there are a lot of times I'll be walking around and see a tree or a plant and wonder what it is. So now if you take a picture of something, like I have this photo of a flower here that I took, if I swipe up, I can click look up plant and it will show me options of what this plant could be. Obviously, this is a type of hibiscus and they also have similar web images, which is really helpful as well. And if you've made it this far in the video, I have a surprise hidden bonus tip for you and that is using Google Lens. This feature is probably only available with certain updates, but it works whether you use Safari or Google Chrome to browse the web on your phone. So let's say you find a photo on Google, maybe you're searching for photos of flowers and you find one that you love and you don't know what kind of flower it is. If you click this icon at the top right with the brackets around the circle, Google Lens will initiate and it'll automatically search for whatever is within the brackets that you set. So you can adjust it, maybe it's a picture of a bunch of flowers and you're only interested in identifying one of them. You can move it around and the search results will pop up at the bottom. So as you can see, this is a balloon flower. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend who could maybe use this information. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.